Yeah, welcome. So I taught in kindergartners in, in my project. So if you don't know what on earth I'm talking about at the end of presentation, that's my problem because I taught kindergartner. So don't blame yourself. So today I'm going to talk about uh, a thing called phonological awareness, which I will explain them by using the measure, which I'm not supposed to talk about the measurements, but you know, it's a great way for us to understand what on earth phonological awareness is. So phonological awareness is a kind of ability that children play with sound. That means how well you play with sounds. There are three measures, that means there are three examples. So for, uh, I'm not tall enough, I will just use the <laughs> pointer here. Okay, you see a cat hat and bell. This kind of measure, we call them the rhyme oddity. That means the, ch the child will ask to point out the odd syllable that did not rhyme with the other two syllables. That means cat, hat, bell. You will point to the bell because it didn't rhyme. And for the Cantonese, is the te, ze, fa. You'll find that fa does not match with the rest of two. So another kind of uh, a playing with sound ability, we call them the deletion ability. So for example, you repeat fox without saying the first sound. So it would become ox. And interestingly, for Cantonese syllables, you can do that as well, like mean then become in like they are missing mm sound. And similarly, for the final phoneme deletion is some like bin become b. Uh, there's an n sound missing. And san become sa. You can differentiate uh, uh, the tiny little uh, differences as a native um, Cantonese speaker, but it will go well with non-native Cantonese speaker. So why phonological awareness is important? Because that's your first Lego in your mind you play with. If you know how to play with the Lego called sound, you are very likely you know how to play, play well with the text. Because for example, in English, basically, Playing with the sound, if you know, okay, sounds are made of different components, you can mix and match. You can apply the same skill to your written system. For example, you spell it out. Basically, the same skill. You mix and match the English letter. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's why for logical awareness is important for learning to read English, and as well as Cantonese. But the mechanism how for logical support learning of Cantonese is very di different from English, which I will not explain here because you didn't sign up for that. And we know that for logical balance is a very strong predictor of reading performance. As I said, it's a warm-up activity for you to read, learning how to write a text. So, my theory is that if uh, phonological awareness is transferable across languages, there's no need for you to relearn everything. That's a good thing about us. It, imagine, um, it's a, a very old concept in psychology called transfer. That means you don't need to learn everything, which I know is very naive and simple because you know your mother is a female. But back to a century ago, that's a very new concept because you don't need to learn everything. Just like the modern Dropbox, you don't need to upload everything when you make and a man. You just change something that necessary. That's how theory and concepts from education transfer to the computer sciences. So let's talk more about the, um, the concept about transfer. So for example, I think a lot of you know how to drive a car. And if one day you need to drive a trunk for some very obvious reason, and I don't know why. Um, you don't need to relearn everything. You don't, you don't need to like, get another license for that because you know they're literally the 
basically the same driving skills. So that means we can use this opportunity to learn how to make learning English and learning Cantonese faster, better, because we, we don't want to waste our time. We have better time to do everything, better than like learning languages. We want to accelerate our learning of phonological awareness of languages. So I will show you how to do this. So this is uh, um, basically the design of my um, DVU project. First of all, I will send children to one of the three groups. The first group is the English group. They will play with English sounds. And the second group will play with the Cantonese sounds. And the third group control. Well, a lot of people, they send children to some like business as usual control in which children do nothing. But in my con control, they will do something else. I will read storybook with them. So from the eye of the teachers and parents, oh, Brad, you are doing something for like literature learning. But indeed, this control group, they are not learning anything about phonological <laughs> skills. That's a clever way. I mean, I'm not sending you, your child to, to, to do nothing because they're in control group. The parents won't like, agree to let their children to join your participant, um, the, the study. So after four weeks, I, I play with them, I taught them, and we laugh and we, we do all the weird things in a good way. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we will have the post test and the delay the post test. The same measurement, same stuff. So what I taught uh, for the children, I redesigned all the to toys for them so that so they they will not be aware that they are learning something weird. They pl just play with toys while learning for logical awareness. For example, like this thing, like like sticky thing. If um, those things that rhymes, you put that and they stick together. So. It's very mechanical practice, but I turned them into something interesting. So for the storybook control, I'm sorry, control group. I wrote storybooks for them. Um, yeah, about a cow doing random stuff like <laughs> turning balls into ice cream and, and like they play hide and seek and one of them like fell asleep and then no one else can find them. Okay, so let's talk about the result. Yeah, um, we need to, like there are a lot of things we need to digest from this chart. So these three are the measurement of English. So let's look at the blue ones in case you are not blind, I guess. Okay, so let's look at the blue uh, line. So it represents the English training group. So as you can see, for the English training group, in the English measure, they are like they're supposed to learn something about English. So as you can see, the blue, blue line, they outperform the control group a lot for the three kinds of measure. So that's what I have promised to the parents. That if your child uh, got into the English training group, your child's English performance will increase. Yes, that's what the, basically the learning. But if you talk about the transfer of learning, that means the English group will also perform well in the Cantonese measure. As you can see, the blue line in the, in the Cantonese measure, I mean, the increase is not very, not very high, but they are still statistically significant. But that's, that means that one stone can kill two birds. If your child was in the English training, that means your child's English and Cantonese for logical awareness will improve. And likewise for the Cantonese group. So as you can see, the pink line. So in the Cantonese training, they do not learn anything about English, but at the end, their English perf performance in English for logical awareness improve a lot as well. So the take home message is don't give 
as the excuse by learning a language is difficult, you can learn one language and get two languages to be improved just by getting one of them. So that's the take home message. Learn one language, improve both of them. That's the purpose of my intervention. So that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.